hello everyone and welcome to today's bite size talk i'm very happy to have here edmund miller uh, from the university of texas at dallas and he is going to talk about git concepts off to you um i'm edmund miller thank you for the introduction um let's get started with some quick git, git concepts um hopefully these will be of interest to y'all there so first we had the legend of the merge cowboy um was a previous presentation on git that we had it kind of kicked this all off um, by alex peltzer with the github contribution basics so the scope of this presentation i'm trying to cover some finer git workflow things um, on these and talk about some different things that might help speed up your workflow and make your life a little bit easier day to day there's also working with GitHub using VS Code and the Git, GitHub CLI um, that Phil gave. This is kind of a continuation of that, maybe a little bit more heavy on the Git side. Hopefully these will be useful to you. Um, so a long time ago, um, my appreciation of Git kind of started with GitHub offering me GitHub Pro for students and giving me private repos. Um, and I'd never used it before, but I fell in love with using Git. So. First and foremost, let's talk about rewriting history. Um, so using git commit amend is a handy quick little tool that you can use. You can also amend a message to it using the dash M functionality as well. Um, this is when you want to go back and you forgot to add in a file or you made a quick little typo on the previous commit that you made. You can also use no edit as well, and that keeps the um, the same message and doesn't even pop up in an editor. You just quickly amend the commit. So the issue with using amend here and rewriting history is that we start to change the commit hashes. And those kind of starts to be weird when you start to push and pull um, with other people and sharing these branches. So that's a problem. So it's not recommended for using this command when you're working on main, master, dev, um, and collaborating with other people mainly. If it's just you, that's perfectly fine. You can force push all day. So quick little example of using amend in practice from the CLI. Um, you have git add nf core main. Um, and let's just say we add a new function. And then we decided that was a lazy commit message. And so we wrote out function in full there. And then, oh, we forgot to format the code as well. And so we went through and we formatted the Python file, and then we amended it with no edit. Um, and that's just kind of what this would look like in practice. Instead of adding all these like, whoops, forgot to add these changes commits on top of these. Um, in VS Code with the baked in functionality, I think, um, then you can go in and commit, and then you can use the commit amend and commit staged um, as well down here and click on those buttons to amend your commit messages and or add new files. You can also do this with GitHub desktop um, and go through in the history. And basically you click on the history tab and then you right click on the um, commit and then you can amend that commit very quickly and just edit the, the message. Um, pretty simple to use from that functionality. A little bit harder from the CLI to get right. And this is just for the previous commit as well. Um, however, I'm sure in GitHub, they've kind of wrangled the underlying parts to make it quick to edit those. And what's what's underneath the hood on those is using Git rebase. And so that's a fun little like common. So we'll go through a fun little common scenario. We'll talk about interactive rebase, and then we'll talk about using it with poll um, by default as well. So. Um, in this scenario, let's just say we went in and we wanted to change all the Cerex sub -work workflows to NF test um, because we're a saint. And so we've gone through, we've done BWA MIM, BWA MIM2, um, and then drag map. And then we've done this branched off of div. So 100 sub workflows later, we finally get finished and we get to test UMI. Yay. So. We go to make our PR and we get in there, but no, a wild Maxime has appeared. And so he's already merged another PR. Um, he just moves too fast. 
for you and then your branch is out of date and you see this button on github and github's helpful though and it tells you to update your branch what the problem is is you had this beautiful linear commit history and then now you have this weird like merge branch dev into enough tests that you're about to merge back into and then we update the snapshots because he changed the test profiles on us so what ends up happening is then we end up with this weird like double merge back in when you merge that pull request in. Um, it's just kind of a weird thing and it's hard to follow in the history. This is just a single instance. You can then get multiple instances of the like recommits coming back in. So the concept that we're trying to do here is rebase. And that's just taking a new base for where we started. So we started back there on that commit Masters then now moved on without us. We're taking our two or a hundred commits and replaying them on top of that new um, dev branch that Maxime has made for us. So the command to do that would be git rebase origin dash dev um, on those. And as you can see, we've just replayed our commits on top of the previous commits. So in comparison here, we have merge on top and then we have rebase on bottom. As you can see, the merge history is pretty difficult to follow at times um, and you can't really tell where the changes are coming in from. Whereas in rebase, you can clearly still see where our, like what each commit is trying to do. So it's much easier to review on a PR and go through and follow someone's thought process instead of like where these merges happened and you don't know what, where the changes are coming in from. So GitHub has recently added the functionality to just do this by default from the web UI if you don't want to do that yourself. Um, and you can just click on the drop down arrows and then it will pull up rebase instead of just updating the branch. Okay, so I also said that we talked about interactive rebasing. So this is where you can go back and completely rewrite history and change everything. So as you can see here, we've got a master branch um, that's out of date with my modules PR. Happens all the time, modules moves fast. So I've right clicked here on the master branch and then I'm gonna rebase the current branch onto that branch. So we click on it and then we click on interactive rebase and you may have to turn this on in your settings, I think. And so then this pulls up this nice interactive rebase window. You can also do this in like the CLI, of course but these nice little drop downs, and then you can see we can drag and drop and rearrange our commits in whatever order we want, just so that they actually like mean something with the changes that we're making. And that'll come into play when we talk, talk about Git bisect. So um, we're going to reword the commit here is what we end up doing. You can also go in and edit it. Um, so we're gonna start the rebase and I'm going to, log into my GPG key so I can sign the commit. And so I'm just going to go in here and I had a little typo with the multi QC um, uh, capitalization. And then we're just going to save the file. And we're going to pull back up Git lens because it closes it by default. And so as you can see now, we have a nice um, clean history where I've rebased the multi QC integration tests on top of the master branch um, from those. And our commit message is now cleaned up and it, we have the proper capitalization of those. So in summary, be a rebase ranger, not a merge cowboy. Set this by default in your um, Git config to whenever you run Git pull, it will use a rebase instead of a merge by default locally as well for you. Um, it's a very handy functionality. Um, it does what you mean to do rather than what you actually tell it to do with the whole merge thing. So uh, Julia Evans, if you don't follow her, um, also has a nice little um, rules for rebasing. Um, I thought it was nice to share this. So basically a couple rules of like, don't rebase a million tiny commits. You're just gonna run into a bunch of merge conflicts. Don't force push to a shared branch. That ends up with like weird pull scenarios for your collaborators. Um, don't try to do too many things in one interactive rebase. Just go back and do it again later. Um, you can end up with weird things. Although I think the VS code and the GUI is kind of help with that. Um, 
also don't rebase other people's commits because that changes who the commit author is and all kinds of other weird stuff going on. Um, and then also you can just bail out of a, a rebase if you get into some weird scenarios, which is nice. You just need to use dash dash abort. Um, and if you're not comfortable with it, don't bother rebasing. Just keep using the merge merge commits and that's okay. Um, so let's also talk about git bisect. This is a handy little piece of functionality baked into Git that I don't think a lot of people use. So let's have a scenario where we broke something. We don't know what happened. We knew it was working in this commit called C1. Let's say that's like version one of the pipeline or whatever. With git bisect, what we do is then we go in and we split all of those commits that we have and we start in the middle and we say, okay, was this a good or a bad commit? Is it still working or is it broken? Um, and then from that, we make a decision on which direction to go and then we go and find where we introduce the breaking change in the commit. This is also why it's important to make small commit messages often so that we can actually do this and not, well, we made 200 changes here, but we don't know what change broke that. So in practice, what this looks like, first, we just give it a git bisect start command, and we're going to give it a broken commit or tag, and then the working committer tag as well. So in this case, we're just going to use head and 2.0. And so then we can do a log and we can say, these are the good commits, these are the bad commits and break those up that way. And then we can say the NF test and then we can run NF test on it. And let's say NF test passed. So then we can tell git bisect, this is a good commit. And then it will move us on to the next commit that it wants to do and split us into the next part of the middle of that binary tree search um, on those. And from that, then we can then run NF test. Let's say it failed get bisect bad, and then it will go the other way. So in practice, this is a pretty quick little workflow. You're kind of doing it anyways to check these out and go back and look at them. You can just kind of start to um, automate some of the searching between those. But we love to automate all the things, so let's even automate this more. With get bisect, there's a baked in command called run, um, and then you can just pass it a command. So what we're gonna do in that is then we can automatically run NF test every time that we want to test the pipeline. So you just pass it the git bisect run NF test command. And then from that, git bisect will automatically mark the commit as good if the tests all pass. And then it'll mark the commit as bad if, if the tests all fail. Um, this might take a really long time in practice. You could also just do next flow run um, and run each of those and go grab a coffee and it'll check all of your commits for you until it finds all the good and bad commits. And then you can just come back and you can figure out where the breaking change was. So I just wanted to include another summary um, for like visual effect of this, of git bisect. So basically we know where our stable branch is. We know where the broken part is at the beginning of like where we, like where we are now. We don't know where the change is. It'll take us right to the middle. If it's a bad commit, it'll take us closer to stable. If it's a good commit, then we move closer to broken. And we keep going until we find where the, the broken commit was. OK, so let's talk about work trees really quick. So have you ever had a lot of active branches going at once? Have you ever been waiting on GitHub runners to pick up your test jobs and just can't wait? to start your, ne your next PR, then I've got a solution for you. Get up work trees or get work trees. So I also asked Copilot to make some of these funnier as well, and it didn't disappoint, um, but I'll just let people read that in post. So work trees. Um, basically what it allows you to do is instead of get cloning multiple times, you can then just get you can then just have separate directories for each of your branches going at the same time. This is really handy if you want to maintain multiple versions at the same time or you're working on different features in parallel or your coworker wants you to try to debug their their feature branch um, but you're working on your own. So in practice these are different directories entirely and outside of the repository. But the difference is you don't have to have multiple Git clones, so it doesn't take up a bunch of space on your hard drive. So you can just do this directly in VS Code as well. Um, 
you have the feature work tree, and then you can basically just write new work trees as you write new branches. You can see over here on the left, we have the uh, create work tree um, section of that. And that'll also show you all the work trees when you start to use them. This is pretty handy when you're working on modules and you have multiple module PRs going at once, um, but you're waiting for people to review them. So, but you, you also don't want to like do multiple Git checkouts and everything, and you need to kind of go back and forth. So for the CLI purists, this is what it looks like in practice. It's a pretty simple command. It's just git work tree add. Um, and then you can say your feature X, this is how you remove that work tree. And then this is how you check out a branch remotely from that. And so these start to get a little verbose. So there's a nice um, CLI utility for um, called work tree switcher. And that just lets you do some of these, these commands really quickly without making it really verbose and having to remember all the incantations. Okay, so um, just wanted to touch on a few GitHub CLI things that I found useful. Phil did this at the end of his presentation, um, and I had a few that I wanted to add. I don't really like the GitHub workflow where you have to fork a repo and then like push to your branch and then make a PR to theirs and then keep those all interchanged, mainly because it's a lot of clicks to go in, fork, and then clone my own repo on that. So I made a quick little um, alias in here to fork a repo. And what that looks like in practice is just GHF, and then you pass the CLI, um, or you pass the repo URL, and then that'll create my fork for me. And then it'll also clone my fork down locally, um, so I can quickly get working on those changes. Another one that I like to use as well is merging a bunch of PRs at once. Um, and so all this does is it just goes in and lists all the PRs, takes the PR number, and then it merges them. And so what a real world use case would be for this is just using this for any PRs labeled a certain thing. So you could also take this and close all PRs that are stale, for example. In this case, I'm merging all PRs that are have the renovate label and then merging them in, which is really handy when you have a bunch of version updates and you've gone through and checked them all. So with that, an obligatory XKCD, and I'll take any questions. Thank you so much. That was very interesting. Um, and now I open this for any discussion and questions and comments. So I have um, a question. Yep, yep, go ahead. Yeah, so Edmund, I uh, while you were away, I, I basically gave like a 10 second explanation of work trees. I'm glad you ended up covering it. We thought it might be too technical, but you actually did a good job of explaining it. But I was wondering, um, how you were doing it in VS Code. So was that through GitLens? Was like that work tree feature that you had separately? I know you had the CLI tool, but when you were doing it in VS Code. Exactly. It's added in um, GitLens. I don't know if you have to have GitLens Plus or not. I don't think so. That. I, Yeah, I personally just use it in um, Magit in Emacs. So this is just a screenshot from uh, Git Kraken, but I will definitely show the article on work trees through Git Kraken on those. It was yeah. it was pretty good. Okay, it seems like the Git lens, the Git Kraken work trees actually checks out the entire repo multiple times. Like it doesn't actually use bare checkouts. Um, yeah. But I'm but I'm guessing the the CLI tool you showed does do it. Uh, yeah, I so I was trying to not cover too many like in-depth details on these and more so give people kind of a, a taste of some of the the different things um but usually when you use work trees um you would do like a bear clone i don't know if ben talked about that um while i wasn't here and then you would then use work trees to then check out a bunch of different ones is what a lot of people do um yeah i don't i don't know whether they do that in git lens or not yeah i was just uh i was finagling with this just yesterday trying to get it to work and it seemed like it seems like basically vs code doesn't really work well with bare checkouts so if you're going to do work trees or anything like that in vs code it's probably better to just have every every branch you want actually checked out just the normal way and i think this is how git kraken does it anyway so i guess i just leave that as a warning for anybody else who tries to get into this is uh 
don't 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 try to get into bear checkouts if you start seeing recommendations around that. Um, don't don't start doing bear checkouts unless you're willing to just do it all in the CLI, or if you're using like Vim or Emacs. Mm -hmm. Good recommendation. Also, the get bisect thing was crazy. I <laughs> there's I feel like there's so many features in Git that like are amazing like that, and just nobody knows about them, and they've been around for years. Exactly. Yeah. It's been, I, I don't use it enough, honestly. I think it's the, that's why I wanted a testing framework in Nextflow so badly, because then you can do stuff like that. So yeah, it's fun. Okay. Are there any more questions or comments from the audience? Okay. I have one more um, and it's about rebase. I am not entirely 100% sure I know what Rebase does, but I knew it, you have to handle it with care. <laughs> and some people have told me that they never do Rebase because they think it's too dangerous. And I'm not quite sure I understand why it's dangerous. Like you said it, it, it sounded like nothing can go really wrong. But I guess there's reasons. <laughs> nothing can go wrong as long as you have pushed your branch to a remote repo if you're just doing it all locally and you haven't pushed anything you can blow away a bunch of stuff on accident okay. if that makes sense versus like yeah merge commit you're probably not gonna like destroy your branch or like rewrite the history in a weird way um so yeah i'd recommend you push first then you rebase and move it over right um, so what is the worst case that can happen Worst case, you end up like rewriting all of your history in a weird way because you didn't um, handle the merge conflicts properly. Right. That's like the worst case. It's kind. Of, it's not any worse than like if you had a merge, like a branch that you were working on, you did a merge commit, and then like you had to then I guess roll back that merge commit. Yeah. I guess you're rewriting the history is is the problem. So you can either duplicate your branch and just make sure if you're scared while you're learning to use it, or you can just push it up to GitHub, um, rebase, and then just push over that branch is what I typically do. Thank you. You're welcome. If there are no other questions, then I would like to thank you very much for today's uh, talk. And... Um... And I also would like to thank the audience for listening. So thank you all very much. You stayed until the bitter end. <laughs> um, and have a, have a good day. <laughs>